And welcome to 10th Year Senior's first minicast. We'll be talking about Battle for Atlantis, a specific team, UNC, which we have seen in Summer of Thunder, but they'll be back here. And we have a special guest from UNC Hoops Talks, uh, Dan DeWitt. We're going to be bringing him in right now. Hello, Dan. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. How are you doing? I'm doing well. And you? Good. Very excited. Good morning, Dan. Good morning. We so how are you? Um, what's the anticipation like coming to the Bahamas? Uh, well, it, it's, it's really exciting. Obviously, it's a very good field. Everybody can see that. Um, and, I, and I like our chances to at least get to the championship game. Um, obviously, anything can happen. But um, I, I really like this team. I think it's gonna, it can be a special and, and really fun team to watch this year. So what are the expectations? I know for the UNC fan base, there are always high expectations, but how far do you think uh, this team can go? Are you talking in this in this tournament or? It, overall, overall for the entire season? Because I mean, it's still season. very, very early in the season. So, you know, you take each one of these games with a grain of salt, but how far do you see this team advancing overall? Right, uh, well, I actually do a podcast and, and I had you know my prediction episode or whatever, uh, overseeing it and and, kind of my expectations for a successful season um, would be to at least get to the Elite Eight um, with, a, with a good chance to go into the Final Four, and then, and then from there, it's kind of anybody's you know, shot. Yeah, especially, I guess, my view of it is it, a lot of it comes down to how far uh, Justin Jackson, how, what his maturity <laughs> um, level through the season goes. We saw uh, University of Kentucky go through some growing pains with their freshmen last year, and ultimately they were able to put it together uh, during tournament time. Um, what do you think Justin Jackson brings to the team and uh, what can he add and probably get you to the elite eight and pass that? Yeah. And, and, and I would back that up with it. It comes down to all the freshmen, how they advance, but Justin right. can be a very special player. Um, he brings kind of a, takes the scoring load off of Marcus page. He's such an efficient scorer. He can score in so many different ways. Uh, he can be a mismatch um, problem for just about any team. Right. Uh, so he, you know, he just takes a little bit of the load off of, of Marcus and uh, and lets us just score in different ways than we have in the last couple of years. It's funny because that, that's the car there. He always talks about Justin Jackson ever since they saw him in Son of, Summer for Thunder. It was the eyeball. They, they so would, like that's a that's a player. They that's they just fell there. in love with him. But I mean, going back to Summer of Thunder, I know I spoke to some of the 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 fans who came down and some of the boosters, and they said that they were upset that they lost. But it was more of a chemistry thing they were trying to get going, traveling. Now that they're coming for the second time, what do you think the attitude is going to be coming back? Well, and I and I hope I hope you know I, I, a lot of people said it's all about chemistry, and it doesn't and it doesn't matter if they lost, or whatever. But you never like to lose, uh, so hopefully it did help the chemistry, and and hopefully it got all the fun stuff out of the way that they can come down now, and it's all about basketball, and it's all business right now, and. And, uh, you know, we'll see. Hopefully that's the case. And what about with the shooting? Because in that game that they did lose, the shooting was was not there. And then the other game they came back, I think they shot, like, lights out that lights game. Out, yeah. um, how? I mean, I know they played a couple games this season. How have they looked early in the season with the shooting? Yeah, uh, better. For us, it's going to be game to game. We have to get, you know, like you said, guys to step up, and Justin's one of them. Um, but guys that can... And like I said, take the load off of Marcus, but also draw guys out. So our big guys, which have been pretty efficient in our first three games, uh, scoring. So we do have to get guys. You know, no matter what gym we're in or where we're playing, get a couple of guys to knock down just a few shots so that they can't sink into and, and just hang on our big guys all game. And then what about the the big men in there? I mean, it seems like when they play against height, that sometimes they have a problem. Um, it, it looks like some of the feet aren't quick enough. Uh, what are they doing to combat that with the defensive schemes? Well, they've they've been pressuring more this year than we have in the past several years. Um, you know, we've done a little bit of run and jump, half court. There's been some full court pressure, um, and we just have so many so many guards and such long guards. Justin Jackson is six eight, playing you know the two or three. JP Tokido is six seven, playing on the wing. So we just have so much length and and so many guys that can come in and. Uh, Theo Pinson off the bench is is long, uh, so they're putting the pressure a little bit farther out. Um, but also, I think you know the way Kennedy has kind of reformed his body over the summer. Um, he's you know I think when you guys saw him this summer and even the first couple of games, he's kind of getting used to that. And uh, he played 31 minutes the other night, 
uh, against Davidson and, and was really efficient the, the whole time. So just to see him progress, I think is going to help us as well. How was, I mean, this is just a little off topic because actually UCF plays Davidson. And I just <laughs> have to always bring my team up. How did Davidson look? Because I know my UCF isn't great at basketball, but I just need to, just, just a little insight on that. <laughs> Well, like anybody that UNC plays, they hit a ton of threes against us. And I don't know that they always shoot that many against you know, teams that aren't as tall and, and things like that. But they, they hit 11 threes against us. Um, but I, I was more impressed with their, you know, it was one of their bigger guys that like, stepped out and hit like six of ten threes, I think. So um, you know, I don't know if they'll play the same way against a, a, a smaller team. Uh, but how do you they think, looked all right. How do you think uh, something like that, like a stretch four, how does that affect uh, UNC def- UNC's defense when they match up with someone like uh, Wisconsin? Yeah, if we if we stay with our traditional lineup, it's something that the other teams could take an, an advantage of, um, stepping out, having either Kennedy or Bryce um, you know, go out and have to guard those guys could, could definitely be a problem for us. But we, do, we are deep enough and we are versatile enough that we right. could go small or something like that and match up. So, um, you know, someone like, yeah, Frank Comiskey could be a uh, problem for us. Uh, and, it, it, you know, and like we were talking about the tournament before, it comes down to who you're matched up with. So right. how far we go could just come down to something like that. I mean, on paper, you look at the Butler matchup. They only have one person or two people, six, eight and taller. So that helps out uh, against your defensive woes with your big men. But at the same time, you know, they have they always bring shooters. So mm-hmm. if they do what Davison did. And just hit all their threes. I mean, I, I think that if there's an upset in the first round, well, we think it's Florida first, but I think UNC has a chance to be upset just because of, of the way this tournament goes. Like teams always get upset. It, but um, what do you what do you think they're gonna do against Butler? Well, hopefully guard the three because if you ask a Tar Heel fan, that is something that we've st- we always struggle with is if they have a shooter or you know a few shooters, um, you know, we struggle guarding that three point line. So uh, again, hopefully that pressure coming out and press, pressuring guys um, will help us out. And and really, I think our depth um, when we get team, you know, if we can play our pace, um, then we can you know kind of outmatch them and, and kind of make them play our game. So uh, hopefully, like we were saying before, that they got the fun stuff out of the way. They're coming down there to take care of business, and, and it won't be a problem in the first round. And just uh, switching uh, really quickly to Marcus Page, he's going to be going up against some really good guards this tournament. Um, he has a first-round grade, and he's going to be going up against Buddy Heal eventually at some point here. How do you think um, Marcus matches up, not just with Buddy, but with uh, all the other guards in the country? Anytime you have a tournament like this that's early in the season with a lot of ranked teams, like this is a time for players uh, like Marcus to you know, try to... Um, upgrade their draft position or make themselves more attractive to NBA scouts. So just a few words on Marcus. Yeah, he's he's a unique player. I think he I mean, to speak on his talent, I think he's as talented as any guard in the, in the country. I would I would want him on my side, you know, picking against just about anybody. Um, but he's so unique in that he's so humble. He you know, he'll never talk about you know, his draft stock or, you know, his stats or anything like that. It's, right. it's all about the team and and really uh, a lot of Tar Heel fans will tell you he's probably being, and even Roy Williams has kind of said he's being too unselfish. He needs to look right. for his shot more and and kind of take games over sometimes. Um, so it's it, that's something he definitely needs to work on. Um, but he'll never he'll never worry about his draft stock. Um, and and I'll take him matched up, but you know against just about anybody right. in the country. And as you get into conference play uh, later on in the season, do you think that's something maybe that the um, the Tar Heels offensive scheme is going to be more uh, page focused? Well, I hope so, um, but but at the same time, you know, bringing in Justin Jackson and and getting those big guys going um, is something we need to do to have balance. But it's definitely something that we'll have to kind of focus on. And and yeah, Roy will. He's already said and told a few guys, hey, you know, go screen for Marcus Page. He's a pretty good player. <laughs> good coaching. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. I mean, we we saw Roy coaching hard in the, in the little bit to the, uh, in Summer of Thunder, but. I mean, if you get through Butler, then the Oklahoma test, I think that that would be a, that'll be a great game. Unfortunately, we'll be pulling for, for Oklahoma because it's actually a, a Bahamian. Buddy Heald is actually Bahamian, so um, we hope he does well Roy, well. Roy likes to go into people's places and steal their brown. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can cheer for whoever you want. <laughs> 
but yeah we'll be we'll be right there the entire weekend um do you want to to give everyone your your websites and twitter handlers so we could get them to follow you yeah for sure um on twitter it's just at all tar hill dan and um i have a podcast i put it up on youtube like you guys uh put yours it's also on itunes it's just unc hoops talk uh you search that and you'll find it pretty easily but uh if you if you follow me on twitter you can from there go just about anywhere that i have stuff out there all right dan well thanks a lot for for giving us some some insight um hopefully maybe if if you guys win we'll, we'll get you on another podcast with your victory celebration um and like I said, good luck to, to UNC, except when they play Oklahoma, because we are homers at some point. <laughs> but um, right, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. You bet. Anytime.